in between are where the legs, the landing legs go in. Here's another view taken by the press. <laughs> that wasn't the shot they took that they actually fell out. <laughs> now that was a shot. Uh, that's by the way, you, the, man, that's, the man kneeling is Dr. Kane from NASA. He came and spent two weeks with me. He went over all the calculations, he watched a model demonstration and he wrote a report. He sent me the copy of that report. He told the media present that he had examined everything, he's done, gone over all the calculations and in his opinion they were absolute correct. On the demonstration of the model, he told the media that model could reach the moon in less than nine hours. Now you compare that to NASA's effort. The Japanese scientists also wrote the book and they also calculated out the effort of that model. They also said it would take under just nine hours to reach the moon and to ask the readers to compare that against the NASA's effort. This Dr. Kane ended his letter to all officials of NASA with a following statement. He said, if we do not marry Sol's technology, when Sol comes out on the world market, he will lead the world and there's nothing they can do because they have no knowledge how to do it. Again, another shot taken from a tree, this time by another person. <laughs> Here are part of my team. We have, at the middle, is Tony Justice. He, full, his full-time job was a mach, uh, tool machinist. And he used to come out on all holidays and weekends to help with the work. He was a great lad. We have to the right of him is Gordon Goodfellow. He, by the way, was glad he is not meeting his Lord. When I met him first, he was in a terrible state. He said the hospital cannot do no more for him. He had a short time to live. He had severe bronchitis and asthma. So I said to him, I'll have a spare generator. I will bring it over and fit it up in your home. Two days later, when I went to his home, he said, boy, I get all my family around this. He said, it's like drinking lovely spring water. He said, I feel good. Four weeks later, he said, can I come up and join your team? So we brought him up. And he said, oh, I can't do this. I said, watch. Let's watch how we do it. The following weekend, he was in the team, working just as hard as the rest. The question is, we can never do anything that's strange, but if we stand and watch other people who can do it, we all can do it. And that applies to every one of us. We, we have to see how we do these things. This is a view taken above of the cabin of the Demon, Demon One. In fact, I often got in it for the press to take pictures. You can, there's plenty of room to lie in it. It was 21 feet in diameter and it weighed 12 tons on completion. We have started wiring up the, under the cabin floor for all the control uh, apparatus that would be used for the radio control side of the craft. We only just started to throw in the leads. They actually go through the, to the generator. Uh, I don't know if you can show where the cables are running through. And we just had to string them up because we had the media present and they take all day filming. Right. Again, we have a colour shot taken by another uh, freelance photographer. Again, show you how the structure of the body is done. 
Again, another view, the shell has gone on. Now, we had a problem here. If television was going to show this craft, the last thing we want anybody to say, you've got batteries in it. Now, we actually had a scientist who said to Louis Giro, when he demonstrated again, look to see where the battery is. Now, do anyone know what battery is available that can live lift a 12 ton lump of material. <laughs> if you do, please tell me where I get it. <laughs> and of course, I'd like to point out in a video which we have released for our one, we are on daytime live and the scientist is demonstrating. He winds up his little flywheel effort uh, and he released it and he said that I, I believe that John Searle whipped this up and got up a high speed that it lifted up and then fell over in the ditch next door. So I asked Louis to write to him and tell him we invite you to come and twist this up and let it go. <laughs> we never had any reply. On the television program at the end if you get the video the, re the interv uh, interview was very funny. He was rubbing that scientist quite hard. And then he said, you people never believe anything unless you see it. So he said, if John comes and he hovers a three foot thing in front of me, I would then believe it. And that was part of the action. So, we have informed him. We'd like to do this for him, but there's a bug. We have to have it outside. It'll have to be on a very long lead. You see, we have to get it off the ground a bit more than three foot. But we'll have a crane. He can get up on the top of the crane so he can be three foot from it. And he can sit there while we're doing the next program. And he can sit there until the battery runs out. <laughs> But of course, I could talk to you for hours, for days, about the things that have happened. What the experts say, and when we show them, they pull their hair out and can't answer. Again, another shot taken of actually the demo one, the one that's well, well known all over the world. Again, another view, we have Tony Justice on top and it looks like we have the, the girl that did all the wonders for the papers who stood on top for their, for their pleasure in the shortest of clothes. I always said to her, you can do what you like. You can get on naked if you want to, as long as the cameras get the picture of the craft. <laughs> <laughs> she was a good girl, she did everything she could without breaking the law. <laughs> now this was an interesting news article. Every so often in England we have what we call the UFO sky search where everybody goes running out to different areas to watch the sky and the media point this out. What they really say in here in the article only a source of right away we were testing our latest craft. That by the way is the wonderful girl that went to great lengths to keep the cameras flashing. Again, another press photograph. In fact, that one was recorded in many newspapers all over the world. That is perhaps the most <laughs> used photograph in the world. I think, no matter who sent me articles all over the world, books, that photo is in it. That, by the way, is the P11 on 